Well, howdy folks, welcome back to the studio. And if you notice right here, this wall was white and now it is black. If you look close here, I put up all these acoustic panels to help um, with sound insulation. I'm going to get some more for the walls over here, but I just haven't gotten that far yet. But anyway, that's not what today's video is about. When I did my last video with the studio tour, several of you asked about the MIDI clock and how I do MIDI. So I figured I'd just do a video on that because a lot of you seem to be curious. So let's take a look. Okay, so here is the MIDI clock that I use. And there are several different ones on the market. Most of them are rack mountable. Um, but I love this one because it's just so small and compact and simple. If you look here, this runs on USB power and it just has two MIDI outputs. That's it. And then the clock, it's just very, very simple. Then if you look behind here, I've got one of these quadra throughs so I can send that MIDI signal to several synths. Now, additionally, it has some buttons here. And what these buttons do, this is a start signal. And you can see when I push this, it will flash up showing that you've pressed start. And then if I push it again, it will go solid showing that you've sent a stop signal. And then if I push the reset, it will go off showing you haven't set a start or stop signal yet. So what that means is if you had three different drum machines and you had them all synced via MIDI, you could send one start signal and you could set start all of your drum machines at once and they would be perfectly in sync. So I think that is a really cool feature of this thing. Now, some of you asked about the modular. Well, let me show you here on the modular. I've just got a MIDI signal coming in to this MIDI clock from Erica. And I'll go ahead and turn it on. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> and this is actually the clock signal that it's receiving right here. This light, I know there's a bunch of lights because it does have a little bit of a clock divider. Then I use Pamela's workout here to do more divisions and various other things with the clock. Um, so that you can see is where I'm actually sending stuff from. That also makes it really handy if I want to sync something like the Volcas over here because they've got an eighth inch clock in. So I can just send a cable from Pamela over here to the Volcas and they are in sync as well. But you can see most of the synths will just have a MIDI cable coming right in the back and that is how they synchronize. Now the MIDI clock itself, it's actually really slick. You can see it's currently set at 66. If I turn this knob, it changes what it's set at, right? So if I set it at 80 here, now watch, if I don't do anything, it's just gonna go back to 66. That's just in case you bump it while you're performing or something, it doesn't actually change the speed. Right, if you want to, co to commit, you would change it. So like if I wanted to change this to 100, let's say, I go up to 100, okay, oops. And then I would hit this and then you see how it flashed? That tells you that it's now committed. Now to set all this up to sync, you have to understand how your synths work. So like for instance, the microbrew here, it's kind of a dumb synth. So when you send a MIDI signal in, it just listens for everything. So note information, gate information, clock information, everything comes in on MIDI. So if I sent this from another synth, it would take the note information and everything and it would make this really hard to use. So that's the nice thing about the MIDI clock is it only sends clocks. So even though this is listening for multiple things, it's only receiving clocks. So it's not gonna change the notes and stuff. The notes will all still be controllable locally. Now on some synths, like say the MoFo over here, it's a lot more fully featured. So if I go in to the programmable here on the MoFo, let's see here, clock. See this, you can choose different things. So like I've currently got it set to send clock MIDI in and out. And that's so it's gonna receive MIDI on the in and it's gonna send clock on the out. But I could tell it to do different things here, like just in or just out or use the internal clock or whatever. But obviously I want it to receive and send because it's gonna send over to this one. And again, you can do this, you know, with all the different throughs and stuff that are built in on your synths. But that's the first thing you need to do. You need to set everything up so that it's receiving clock via MIDI. Okay, so to demonstrate how this works, you can see I've set the MIDI clock at 85 BPM. Okay, that's going to the quadra through into the sense. Now if we come over here, we can see Pamela's has also detected the 85 BPM to show that it is in sync and then this will be flashing at 85 BPM. In addition, the microbrute over here has picked it up and this should be flashing at 85 BPM. So let's check it out. If we start a baseline on the mono synth, and by the way, I'm doing ambient audio here, so the quality might not be the greatest, but that should be at 85 BPM. Let's come over here to the MoFo. And let's add a melody line to that. Perfectly in sync. We can also start the modular. Let's do that. Everything is perfectly in sync because it's all 
coming from the MIDI clock. Now this is what's really cool. Watch, if I slow this down, let's go to like 60. As soon as I hit this, everything slows down. Let's slow down again, let's go to like 40. Perfectly in sync. Let's speed it up. Let's go to like, let's see, let's go way fast. Let's go to 110. So that's how it works. So there you have it. That's how I do MIDI sync in the studio. There are lots of different ways to do it. You can do it with MIDI routers. There are various uh, rackable master clocks. You can use a drum machine as your master clock. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but I tried it for years and had trouble with it. And, you know, certain things don't always send clock. Like if they're not running, they don't send clock. And then you get into that weird thing. And so I just went with the MIDI clock because I'm like, it's so simple. It's so straightforward. That's how you do it. Now, the MIDI clock is fairly expensive. You can buy a small synth for what you can buy the MIDI clock for. For me personally, I remember uh, years ago, I'd been looking at one and I ended up getting a bonus check from work and the bonus check was the exact same price as the MIDI clock. So I just said, you know what? It's a sign and I just bought the MIDI clock and I've never regretted it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do MIDI. Again, you need to do what works for you, but I love the MIDI clock. Can't say enough good things about it and it makes it so easy to keep all of this gear in sync. Another thing about the MIDI clock, since it has multiple outputs, you can plug one into your audio interface and also synchronize your DAW to the MIDI clock. So it's very, very useful. Really love it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for watching the video about the studio tour. If you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. See you guys soon.